Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Exciting day today, we have the second developer preview or the first beta of Android P available to us uh, shown in Google I.O. 2018 which is quite nice. So today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the Android P beta uh, using Fastboot and we're going to be using the factory images. So right now we'll need to start downloading a few things. So first up we'll download the latest SDK platform tools and we'll download the one for your operating system. This is just Fastboot and ADB, these programs that allow you to communicate with your phone through your USB cable. So just download the latest version here. Next up you want to download the latest factory image for the second developer preview or the first beta of Android P. Now select the one for your device, mine's the Pixel 2, read and agree to the terms and conditions and download the Android P factory system image. And once you've done that, we'll also download the latest version of the TWRP custom recovery. And here we're going to download the image, so this file and of course the flashable zip as well. You need these two files. Of course the flashable zip is actually optional, you don't have to install TWRP on your phone, you can just temporarily boot it instead, which is uh, what I'm going to be doing. And last but not least, we want the latest version of Magisk Beta, just so it has the improvements that are needed for Android P by the time this all comes out. Once you have that downloaded, you should have five files here, the latest version of Magisk Beta, the latest version of the platform tools, the latest version of the TWRP image, and of course the TWRP installer as well. And we have, most importantly, our factory image for Android P beta. Now to start off, we're going to extract the platform tools. So the programs that we need to communicate with our phone. Now if you've used the ADB or Fastboot before, you don't need to extract them again. Just use the same ones that you have, providing that you've used them recently. But if you don't have these out somewhere, you can extract adb.exe and the two adb DLLs. Then you want to extract the fastboot.exe the libwimp thread dash one DLL and then afterwards you want to download the make2fs and the configuration file and the other make2fs exe so you extract these eight files out into your Android folder now our folder might seem a little bit crowded right now but that's alright next up we're going to open up the factory image so just open that up open up the folder inside and then what you want to do is extract the image the bootloader and radio images outside just like that Give it a few seconds since the image zip file is actually quite large, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so we've copied those files, so we can close the factory image. Now you want to copy over the Magisk zip file that you've downloaded over to your internal storage on your phone, just so we can flash that in TWRP uh, when we get up to that stage, and if, and if we can get up to that stage as well. So right now we're going to flash the factory image. So before starting, it is very important that you back up anything that you might need from your internal storage. Uh, things like app data or pictures, music, your downloads, things like that because when you do this, things can go wrong since you have rooted your device. And even if you haven't rooted your device, there is also a slim chance that you know things just go wrong. So what you want to do is ensure that you have a backup of everything that you need. Now I've already done that, so we can go ahead with the process here. And now we'll head over to our device where we will remove the substratum overlays that we've currently installed or disable them at least because Android P doesn't work with substratum at all currently. So we need to go to our substratum app and well, that's the wrong one. So substratum and then from there we want to go to our manager and then we can just disable all the overlays or we can uninstall them either one. So I'm just going to tap on uninstall because substratum doesn't work with Android P right now. Once you've done that, we can now reboot our phone to the bootloader. To do that, I'm going to hold the power button and tap on restart. And when this screen freezes or turns black, you want to hold the volume down button. So I'm going to hold it now. Keep holding it until your phone reboots into the bootloader. It may take a few moments for it to do that, but just keep holding it until you see the bootloader screen. And after that, you can let go. And once your phone's in the bootloader, we need to head back to our computer. And from here, we're going to open up a command prompt window or a PowerShell window in the same directory. So on Windows you can hold shift and right click in an empty space in the folder and select one of the options that sounds like open command window here or open PowerShell window here. I'll be demoing this using PowerShell prompt as I think most people running at least Windows 10. The latest versions of Windows 10 will have the PowerShell option only but if you want you can use the command prompt and of course if you're a Mac or Linux you can also use the terminal. And I'm just going to put this up here is that 
when you're using programs in your terminal interface or your command line interface, there are different ways of doing it depending on whether you're using the command prompt, the PowerShell, or the terminal. Now, for example, in the command prompt, you don't need to prefix your program with any anything when you run it. But on PowerShell, you need to prefix it with a dot and backslash, but you can automatically fill that in by pressing tab, and I'll show you later. And of course, on in the terminal, you need to put dot forward slash. And this is more of a security function for these two of the PowerShell and terminal. And um, I won't go into too much detail on that, but depending on which shell you're using, you might need to append different things to the fastboot program or whichever program you're trying to run. Now that that's been explained, we'll need to check if our phone is connected in fastboot to our computer. And we're going to do this by typing in fastboot. Now this is for PowerShell users and probably terminal users as well. Now you can see if when I type in fastboot and I put a sample command like devices, you'll say that fastboot is not recognized as a name, function, script file, or program. Now this is because it's not added to the path environment variable, at least on Windows. Now a suggestion here says that if you're trying to access the program fastboot within our current directory and you trust the fastboot executable in there, you can prefix it with the backslash and the dot to run the program that's inside this folder rather than the one that's listed in your user bin or your path environment variable. So on for PowerShell users and terminal users, you can type in fastboot or start typing in fastboot and then press tab and it'll auto-complete the executable name for you. You can also do this on the command prompt as well if you don't feel like typing too much. So first up is the fastboot devices command and we do that and that should return our serial number which it has and that means our device is connected successfully there. So next up we want to flash the latest bootloader that comes with Android P. So we we'll type in fastboot flash bootloader, leave a space at the end and drag in our bootloader. And this is going to update the bootloader on our current active partition, which is the boot slot B. You can tell on the phone here on the bootloader screen that we're on the B boot slot. Now that means we need to flash the other boot slot as well. Now I'll bring up another information sheet where you can manually specify which partition slot to flash. You can either append underscore A, B or other to the end of the partition name and you can there directly flash that partition. So in this case, I'm going to be using the underscore other partition name. Uh, but if that doesn't work, then just take a look at your current boot slot and then just choose the other letter that's not your current boot slot and you can use that again. So for example, since I'm on boot slot B, I can use, um, for example, bootloader underscore A and that will flash the bootloader underscore other slot, technically. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to type in fastboot flash bootloader and then underscore other. Leave a space after that and drag in the same bootloader image. Once that's done, we can now go ahead and reboot our phone back into the bootloader. You can do this by navigating the buttons on your device or you can type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader like so and our phone should reboot itself back into the bootloader and once you've done that we can now go ahead and flash the latest radio and we're going to follow the same structure as our bootloader update command so we'll type in fastboot oh, that's gone weird so we'll type in fastboot flash radio leave a space at the end and drag in our radio image like so once you've done that we're going to flash the other radio slot as well so we type in fastboot flash radio underscore other leave a space after the radio other and drag in our radio image once that's done we're going to reboot back into the bootloader once more so we can um, just use the same command fastboot reboot bootloader and our phone will reboot itself back into the bootloader. Once that's done, we can now do our image update command, and after that, we'll be flashing TWRP, or sorry, booting it, and then hopefully rooting our device as well. So now we're gonna type in fastboot two dashes, so two hyphens, and then type in skip dash reboot, and then type in the word update, and leave a space after that, and then drag in our image zip file that we extracted from our factory image, now this will start extracting all the images to our disk or to RAM and then we're going to flash them one by one automatically using the update command. Now things don't go right here or if you don't have the update command, you can try to extract the images from the image zip and then 
you can flash those files individually as well. If you do run into any other issues, you might want to try rebooting back into the bootloader, uh, changing your USB ports that you plugged into. Maybe USB 3.0 isn't working for you. Try USB 2.0 and uh, also try replugging the cable as well. So this is something else that happened again. And I think this could also be a driver issue. So be careful of that. And so currently I've failed here and apparently there are too many data write failures, too many links. So we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader and then we're going to try the command once more. And I'm also going to replug our device like so. Now I still think this is a driver issue because of what Windows 10 likes to install instead. And you can run the same command and give it another go. But uh, I might be able to make a video on that, to how to uninstall the Lee Mobile device driver and install the Google USB drivers instead. Okay, so it looks like it finished fine this time. What we're going to do next is boot the TWRP image. So we'll type in fastboot, boot, and then drag in our TWRP image that we downloaded earlier. Hit enter, and our phone should boot into TWRP. Now at this point, we don't need the computer anymore, so we can just go ahead and go to our device. We'll wait for our phone to boot into TWRP. Okay, that's good, that's a good sign. Now we can see if we can decrypt the data, uh, see if they've changed anything in Android P, so we'll just put in my pattern that I'm used to using. Okay, that's good, good sign that TWRP is working. And now last thing we need to try is to flash Magisk. Now if you want to install TWRP, now is the perfect time to do it. You need to install TWRP, like use the flashable uh, zip, the TWRP installer, before you install Magisk. So if you want to, you can do that, but I'm just going to flash the Magisk zip file, because I don't want TWRP there. Looks like this is working alright, but I guess the real test is when your device tries to boot up as well. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to tap on Reboot System, cross our fingers, and hope for the best. Hopefully our phone will boot up into Android P Beta, and then we'll also have rooted our phone using Magisk as well. Okay, that's looking good. Sometimes it might crash to a black screen and take you back to the bootloader. In that case, you might want to try reflashing the image zip file using the update command once more. Okay, our device has booted up finally, and we can see this new navigation bar already. So it did take a little bit longer, but that of course is because we've updated to Android P, and it's not one of those small security updates, nothing like that. So let's unlock that. Looks cool so far. Uh, so we'll be playing around with this for a little while. Maybe I'll go back to a custom ROM later. But everything is still here, which is great. We've got our old navigation bar back. But that's right, we can enable it ourselves anyway. Okay, we've got a few changes here in terms of images and stuff. Oh, sorry, icons, I should say. Phone is on vibrate. Is it now? Okay, let's just go to the settings and have a look at the system. I think there are only a little change, little bits of change, I should say. Um, that I can see currently and there is our about phone showing so many details for some reason okay that's our build number I'm gonna have to blur all this out it's gonna be a pain anyway yeah we're on the PPP2 build of Android P you can see getting notifications already and that's all good but um, let's have a look at our um, let's see yeah, swipe up on home button. So we can turn that on and we can see our new gesture navigation. So you can move it side to side to see which place you want to go to, or which app you want to go to, and then let go and you'll be there. So you can quickly switch between apps by just sliding it to the right a little bit, and you can just go between those two. Maybe a little bit more handy since your thumb's always in the middle, but at least the quick switch functionality is still there. So that's enough of some new features. We'll just double check that we're still rooted. And it looks like our app drawer isn't having fun, or at least Nova Launcher isn't. So we'll just open the Magisk Manager like that. And you can see that we've installed Magisk Manager and everything works. Now, the safety net should pass on this still, even if you're not rooted as well, which is great. 
And um, yeah, that's good. So thanks for watching, guys. You can see that something's already been granted root access as well. So we're fine on that. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below in the YouTube comments. Or better yet, hop over to my Discord server. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or something you'd like me to take a look at, um, I'll be more than happy to consider it as well. So feel free to leave it down in the comments below or on Discord. So as always, hope you enjoyed this video and happy flashing.